Hello, hello. It's seven o'clock Thursday night. Time for live stamping. Let me get logged in here. Welcome. I've got a super fun project for you tonight. Gorgeous. I just want to make sure, oh, this thing is like so in my face. Okay, I want to be able to see who is watching, see people as they come on, and I want to say hello, um, and I want to interact with you. So when you pop on, make sure you say hello to me. Tell me where you're from. I love to see who's watching. Hi, Sharon. Welcome. Oh my gosh, I had quite the day today. Uh, so... Saturday starts hunting season, and I'm a hunter, and um, my husband hunts as well. We don't hunt together. Uh, he hunts with some friends, and I hunt with family, with my dad <clears throat> and my cousin. So it's been a little bit of a whirlwind at our house trying to get ready for um, getting in the woods and packing up our stuff and Oh my gosh, I'm doing some working from home so that I can spend some time with family um, over the Thanksgiving holiday and just trying to get everything caught up at the office uh, before I left and just trying to get packed. It's been crazy. So, but I'm here stamping with you guys tonight and I'm super excited. I got to spend a lot of time in my craft room this weekend. And I made the coolest projects. I'm having a live, uh, or not a live, I'm having a stamping event here on Black Friday, kind of a girl's night. And I have some of the projects at least designed for that, not cut yet, because that would be way too prepared for me. So, um, my week. So I talked a little bit about getting ready for hunting and uh, that's been awesome and I'm super excited. I can't seem to get this in the right place. So sorry for all the jostling around. But I have to tell you that the highlight of my week so far has been this. You guys, I always know that holiday season is here when Sierra Mist releases their cranberry flavor. And I love cranberry anything, cranberry bread, cranberry pie. So um, we bought some of the Sierra Mist cranberry and the Sprite cranberry, and it's so good. So I'm enjoying a little cheat on my diet tonight. <clears throat> anyway, um, I... I'm excited in the stamping world because stamping right now has online extravaganza going on. Hi Robin, I see you just popped on. And this is like starting your Christmas shopping early. It's a great time to stock up on, there's a lot of paper and ink and stuff discounted. So that's when I like to kind of build up my stash. I haven't done a tour of my craft room for a while. I should maybe do that, but I've got this um, paper like shelf that I keep everything, all my extra paper on it, and I always have one uh, ream of one of our packs of paper in my uh, file folder that I'm using right now, and then I have an extra pack on my. Uh, bookshelf couldn't think of the word um and then this is a good time for me to stock up because I always like to make sure that if I run out of the last piece on in my file cabinet then uh I know that it's time for me to go and get my extra pack and sometimes I'm running low on those so anyway online extravaganza I posted something on that yesterday there are some really great deals so make sure that you check out the link for that. Uh, for those of you popping on, make sure you say hello as you come on. Tell me where you're watching from. I love to um, see where everybody kind of comes from to check this out. <coughs> um, 
And remember, I love to interact with you. So here's my rules. If you like what I'm doing, show it. Sh hit that like button or hit that love button or hit that laugh button or if I say something really sad, hit the cry button, whatever it is, because that makes me feel really great. Can you imagine um, how silly you might feel if you were on the other end of this camera trying to stamp for people and it's crickets? Oh my gosh, I just hate that. So if you like what I'm doing, if you have questions, ask. If I miss it, I promise I will go back and answer your questions uh, later on. Hi, Julie. Hi, Mackenzie. I saw you popped on. I see my mom is watching. Hi, mom. Uh, Sharon, watching from Eden. Oh, cool. <clears throat> um, and the other thing is I give away prizes. So that's cool. And you can be entered to win a prize by sharing my video on your page so that your crafty friends can see it and by commenting on the video and by liking. So that's the other cool thing about interacting is you get a chance to win a prize. So I am gonna get started stamping instead of yapping at all of you. I'm gonna flip the camera around and we're gonna do prizes first, I think. So bear with me while I flip this around. The other thing I should note is that usually John has the dogs under wraps while I am up here stamping and tonight it's all me. So if you hear him barking in the background, well, that's just my dogs. <clears throat> okay, prizes. So remember you guys, in my last live, we made this super cute moose card. And we took the negative from the punch of the moose and made this super cute moose card. And we used our, um, what do they call that? Buffalo check background stamp. <clears throat> and we put these together. We decorated the inside. Super cute. And then I had showed you that when I first made these, I made them in real red, and I still can't decide which ones I like better. So I'm giving away, for my prize, one of each color. You pick which design you want and which color. And the winner is Cindy Howard. I think Cindy is in, uh, was it South Dakota? I think South Dakota, but I don't remember the city. Sorry, Cindy. Um, when you see this, you need to uh, get me your address so that I can send you your prize in the mail. And then let me know. You'll get to pick out two of these. Uh, let me know which ones you want. One green, one red, and I will send those out to you. I'm also in the process of organizing my stamp room and uh, clearing out some of my gently used stamps. So... The next time we come on, I will have some of those for prizes for you. Be I hardly used any of um, some of them. I only use like one of the stamps in it. So that's pretty cool gig. All right. We're using our Stamparatus again tonight. And we are, let me get organized here a little bit. We are going to be using... Uh, a couple things. And... All right. I don't know if we're using this. I don't know why I have this here. Let me see. Yeah, we're not using these. I don't know why I have that in there. Weird. Anyway, we're using the birch background stamp. I love, love, love this stamp. Of course I do, because you just heard how I'm a hunter. I love anything to do with the outdoors, especially when it comes to stamping. And we are also going to use the Toil Christmas Bundle. So, of course, with a bundle, you're getting your stamp set with something else, usually a punch or some dies. And here we have the 
dies that come with it. And because they don't have the name on here, of course, I don't remember what they're actually called. Let me see if it says on here on this insert. Christmas Cardinal Dies. So it looks like we've got a die that coordinates with this uh, twig um, branch thing, I'm a jigger here. And then this is one of my favorite parts of this card or of this stamp set. And honestly, I didn't even realize it until I made the card that I'm going to show you tonight. Yes, Robin, this birch stamp is awesome, isn't it? Um, it's these banners. You just wait. These look like nothing spectacular on the front of this uh, stamp set, but they are beautiful once you stamp them. And of course we have the coordinating dies for them. So that's awesome. And then we have the Cardinal, the gorgeous Cardinal, of course. And we've got a couple sentiments for you with love. And then we've got these pretty swirly things. We'll be using that on the inside of our card. And then we've got this um, sentiment here that says, may the season be filled with beautiful moments and happy memories for you and those you hold most dear. That's really nice. This is a cling stamp set, not photopolymer. And remember now that we have the cling stamp sets, these are super sticky. So you'll see I actually mount my stamps now. I used to not do that. Um, we're also going to be using our Stampin' Blends tonight. We're going to be doing a little bit of watercolor. The card I'm going to show you looks very detailed and intricate, but honestly, it's not that difficult. It's pretty easy to put everything together. So let's get started. I'm going to move some of my stuff out of the way here. I have already loaded up my Stamparatus with my Birch stamp. And bear with me, I'm getting some of my supplies out here. Okay. I am using I've got a piece of real red for our card base. This is cut four and a quarter by eleven, and then when you have tall cards, remember you need to score them so you get a nice clean fold here. That's scored at five and a half. I've got a black layer. Um, these are the same, one's for the outside, one's for the inside. Five and a quarter by four. And then we've got one on the inside that's also five and a quarter by four. And a white layer on the inside that is five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. I've got some other scraps here that you will see what we do with shortly. Now, I'm going to do the inside of this card first, I think, and just kind of get that out of the way. So let me move this. Okay, I need some, where is it? Soft suede. I need some memento, of course. And I want some real red. I was using so many of these stamp colors that I did not want to um, pack them up to get ready for live stamping with you tonight because. Um, I was making other cards, so. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do here is stamp our inside sentiment. This one that says, may the season be filled with beautiful moments and happy memories for you and those you hold most dear. Okay, 
I like to line up my, um, when I'm trying to do a straight sentiment, I like to line it up here on my grid paper and that way I can eye it up. Let's see, that actually is not very straight. So let's try that again. Much better. And I've got my stamp and scrub off to the side. I had a mess everywhere and I don't want to get this all over my card so I'm going to kind of clean up my stamps as we go. Next we're going to use these fun swirlies with our real red. It's kind of hard to see the red on this red rubber. Add a little detail here. I think that those swirlies make the card look super elegant. And now we're going to do some stamping with our cardinal. Uh, I'm using soft suede for this and I'm going to stamp off so that I don't get a super dark image. And we're just going to tuck him in right here. Gorgeous. What do you think? This is just the inside of our card. Okay, let me move some of these out of the way. Now... I'm mounting this on a piece of five and a quarter by four. Thank goodness paper has two sides, huh? This is the glue that I could not get to work last time. I need to throw that away. And we just have a little bit of this black layer peeking out to really make these this black sentiment pop. And now you're going to see that the red also pops out when I mount it to the inside. So when I am making my cards, I am really conscious of the colors I'm using in my layers and in my ink. And that is probably my favorite part about Stampin' Up! is how everything matches. It's so easy. I don't even have to have that great of an eye for color to try to get everything lined up. Okay, so We've got the inside of our card done, and that's already gorgeous. To be honest with you, this would also make a beautiful, very simple stamping outside of a card. And so I might do some easy cards like that <clears throat> to send out for Christmas. Okay, let's get some of the stuff moved so we can get to the front, the good stuff, right? What do you guys think of the inside? How do you like that? I kept wanting to put the bird over on this side and then I realized he was looking backwards. So I thought he worked out a little bit better that way. What do you think? Do you agree? You think he looks better that way? I kind of thought he did. Okay. I'm gonna set my card aside so we can get working on the card front. Here I've just got a half piece of Whisper White that I'm going to end up cutting down later, but what I have found when I'm using these background stamps, it is easier to stamp on a larger piece of paper that I then cut down smaller than it is to try to cut the paper to size. 
and stamp it. Now, I usually use Memento when I am stamping black, but I'm going to use Stazon. And for the technique I'm going to show you right now, you are going to want to use Stazon. So, how many of you have used Stazon before? Do you love it? What do you think about it? It's got this extra uh, plasticky layer because it dries out so quick. This thing smells like permanent marker and I love it. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna ink up my stamp set. Stazon is permanent ink. There are lots and lots of stampers out there using Stazon to stamp on wood, on glass, on, um, they're making cute candle holders with it. It's awesome. It helps you take your stamping uh, beyond just paper. Okay, I'm pushing this down. I wanna get a nice image. That looks pretty good. Now it dries pretty fast. I honestly am not even gonna bother to try to clean it off of here because one, I don't have the stays on cleaner and two, it's permanent. So it's not gonna come off anyway. Okay, let me set my stamp apparatus aside. Now we've got this piece of cardstock and we need to cut this down. I'm gonna cut it down to five and one eighth by three and seven eighths. I'm using the new paper trimmer. For those of you who don't have the new paper trimmer, it is awesome. I am in love. It's got two blades, cutting, scoring, they go further out to the ends than our old paper trimmer, so it's way easier to cut a 12 by 12 uh, piece of cardstock if you need to. And this arm does not flop all over the place. It locks in place so that when you're traveling with it, you can travel without it kind of flopping. And I always worried that mine was going to break. It also has an arm that comes out so you can cut the bigger pieces. And I've noticed that this big line that goes all the way down here lines up perfect with your five and a half mark. Okay, so what did I say? Five and one eighth. So I'm gonna cut, actually you know what I'm gonna do before I do that? I'm gonna cut some of this extra stuff off of here so that I am working with most of this paper. All right, so we got five and one eighth. Okay, actually what I'm gonna do is go here and then I'm going to trim a little bit off this top. Five and an eighth. This thing cuts, oh, so smooth. It does not leave any of those little wisps behind. I love that. And then we want to go, what was my other dimension? Three and seven eighths. Now I'm paying attention to what's left behind. I want to get this nice chunky piece of the birch bark in here. So I'm gonna make sure not to cut any of that off. All right. So here's the thing. I'm in the woods a lot. I love hunting, love being out there. And I cut this apart and I was ready to mount it on my card and I realized that this does not actually look very much like the birch I know. I played around with it and I thought it's got to be missing something. And John and I were hiking, you know, on our anniversary trip. And I realized birch trees are not just solid white with these black um, kind of bark marks on it. There is a little bit of tan in here. So we're gonna do some schnazzing up of this birch bark. I've got a clear block 
here and I'm using my soft suede reinker to put just one drop on there. I've come to really like this technique for watercoloring. A lot of people will squeeze their um, they'll squeeze their stamp pad together and then kind of use the cover for it, and that works great. But that's not as easy in our new stamp pads, um, and I don't want to be that rough. So uh, I'm picking my larger water aqua painter here. I'm gonna get the right amount of water and I'm just gonna pick up some of this color. I don't want too much because I want it to be a little bit subtle. There we go. And what I'm gonna do, it's the details sometimes in our stamping. I think I have all ladies watching me so I'm gonna say ladies. What I'm doing is just going through here and I'm just watercoloring all the areas just a little bit extra where all those black lines are. And I'm again, the color I'm doing this in is soft suede. What do you think of this? As I'm doing this, I mean, does this look more like birch to you? I f it makes all the difference in the world to me as someone who's out there in the woods kind of seeing this stuff regularly this I think looks so much more realistic it adds uh, detail to it so again I'm just hitting all these lines and then where we have this big I'm just filling in here. I'm not being perfectionist about this. I am leaving some spots, making it look rustic, but I am making sure to try to catch all of the black lines. Thank you, Robin. Do you think it looks more realistic? I love it. And then I'll just kind of come in and There we go. That easy. It just takes this birch really to the next level for a rustic -y, realistic looking card. Now, when you watercolor on here, this is such easy cleanup. I literally just wipe it off. And my block is clean. Okay, I want this. It's not very wet because we were very light with our color. Um, but I'm going to set this aside to dry and we are going to work on our cardinal next. So let me get my white here. I'm going to be doing some blends. Trust me, you're going to want to see this. Okay, and remember when we use our Stampin' Blends, we do not want to use our stays on. We want to use our Memento. So, Stampin' our Cardinal. And now, let me clean this off so I don't ruin my project here because I know me. I am going to do some coloring. Okay, here's the thing. I looked, one of the things that I do <coughs> is look online for different inspiration as I make my cards. And I saw that almost everyone using this stamp set is using their beautiful blends to color in their cardinals. And I think it looks just awesome. So what I'm doing right now is I've got a 
which one the blend I've got dark real red here I'm being a little bit choosy about where I color that trying to stay within the lines as best I can I'm using the fine tip so for those of you who are new to blends we've got two sides this cover snaps in place you're going to want to do that so they don't dry out and then we have our our bigger tip for less detailed areas <clears throat> all right so next I'm going to come in with my dark crumb cake And I'm just going to color a little bit here around where I colored in my red. And then we've got some over here. I'm going to blend the edges of this a little bit. And now I'm coming in with my light crumb cake. And I'm filling in the rest and blending really well. These colors blend as long as the marker is wet and the ink is wet that you're coloring, it will blend. Do you notice that I am coloring my cardinal? Do I have the wrong color here? Oh, nope, light crumb cake. I'm gonna use my other side. I am not coloring in a male cardinal. I'm actually coloring a female. I think that female cardinals are beautiful. And everything I saw online was a male cardinal. And I wanted some girl power here, so that's what I decided to do with my. Okay, and I'm bringing all those blends together, blending those reds in to the softer light crumb cake. What do you think? I think I need to bring in some of the dark. How do you like the female cardinal? <clears throat> Most of the stuff I'm seeing is all males. We needed some girls. Okay. The other thing I noticed about the female cardinal is that they've got some red in their beak. And I noticed that because I Googled it. So I'm going to show you a really cool trick with our Stampin' Blends here. I'm starting with dark, real red. I'm moving to light, real red. And then I'm doing light Cajun craze and then I've got dark daffodil delight this doesn't look like much now but you just wait till the magic happens and I'm going over all of these colors with my daffodil delight and blending them forward Doesn't that look gorgeous? All right. I did one in dark crumb cake already. OK, 
here's my model. You can see it's a little bit darker than the one that I have here. But what you would normally do is run this through the big shot. I'm gonna save you guys some time, not having to watch that. All right, and I've got a scrap of real red here. I'm gonna take my memento and stamp my uh, banner. May your days be merry and bright. I love these banner stamps. They're so cool. All right, now I gotta find my die cuts. Okay, let me run this through my big shot. I don't know about you, but I'm super excited for the new, um, whatever new die cutter that Stampin' Up! is gonna come out with. I'm ready for something new, aren't you? Okay, line that up. I'm using my magnetic platform, of course. I honestly have no idea if you can even get this anymore through Stampin' Up! But it's awesome. It's a lifesaver. It keeps everything in one place, and I love that. All right. Do you see how beautiful this banner turns out when it's die cut? It's just gorgeous. Okay, time to put our card together. So we've got our piece here that is um, dry. And I need my linen thread. When I am doing these um, rustic-y kind of neutral cards. Did I not grab my linen thread? Oh, I thought this was linen thread. Here it is. <clears throat> I like to keep the ribbon on it a little bit neutral as well. And so I'm going to, um, I want to get a couple layers of this. So let me get my snips out here. Oh no, I dropped them. Sorry guys. All right. And let me cut it at the seam here. Oh, what am I doing? I need to mount this on my black piece. <laughs> We almost had a mishap. Okay, we've got our birch. I really want that black to pop. I toned it down a little bit and now we're gonna make it pop by mounting it here on a piece of basic black. See how it really brings it out. It makes those colors pop even more. I love it. Okay, now we can go to our linen thread. And I'm gonna tie a bow. I cut these too big, but you know how that goes. All right, I have shown you guys my little trick a million times. I tie this in a knot so I don't need to use my finger to keep it down. Tie this in a bow. Then it's super easy to just pull the ends the size you want them. And then I like to kind of play around with how I want that to sit. When I get it in a place that I like it, I usually secure it with a glue dot so that it's not flopping around here. And our ends are like, I don't know what's going on here. Let me pull these through the loop. All 
Okay, let me trim these so that they're not getting in my way. All right. I used a circle punch, the big one, two and a quarter, and I cut a piece out of vellum. And what we are going to do is we're going to mount our cardinal to the vellum and we're going to put our banner over the top. So I'm going to glue the banner over the top first. And what I'm doing is I'm just tucking this in right here under the wing. So I'm going to put some glue just on the edge. This glue is super sticky, so you really don't need a lot. All right. And then I'm going to mount this on dimensionals on my vellum piece, which will then get mounted on dimensionals here. I do not, this darn thing. There, I wanted my bow sideways and it was not going right. Okay, so we're gonna kind of pay attention to where we've got our bow. Actually, you know what, I have my vellum underneath the bird and underneath my layers. So put a little glue down here and we're just gonna make sure that we hide this glue when we put our bird over the top. Okay, that's pretty easy. I uh, need some dimensionals. Get our dimensionals here. And stick it in by our bow. Secure it down. And then I'm also going to pop this layer up onto my card front with dimensionals. What do you guys think so far? Like it? Love it? Hate it? Sad about it? And now I'm going to mount this to my card front. Get that centered. There we go. Oh my gosh, you guys. You're done. That was pretty easy. What do you think? How do you like our girl cardinal? I also made one with the male cardinal. And for this one, I used the soft suede, um, soft suede card base, but I did the inside the same on both of them. So which one do you like better? Do you have a preference, the male or female? I'm kind of partial to the pretty female, but those are my favorite of the Cardinals anyway. I think they turned out pretty cool. Now remember guys, if you're watching my replay on YouTube, a picture of my face is probably showing up somewhere in their corner. Make sure you click that so you subscribe to my videos. And 
This is my website. I have a new one, countrycardsbyrose.stampinup.net. And I will post the project sheet for these cards with all of the dimensions and all of the projects I or all of the products I use to make this. I will put a project sheet up on my Facebook page. I will also post the replay of the video so you can get a link to the items. My November host code, this is really hard to see, but it's XVWVT2ZN. So if your order is $150, this is the host code you use. If it's over, skip that host code so you get rewards. Now, before I close, I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of what I also did with these sets for um, my next live, which is gonna be Thanksgiving night. When you're stuffed from eating turkey, I'm gonna be going live and stamping with you. So, next week I've got a 3D project for you. I'm gonna make this adorable box that looks super Christmassy. And when we pull off this belly band, you can see my box is just big enough to hold. I love uh, diffusing oils. So I'm going to be giving this as a gift. And it holds a um, 5 milliliter bottle of essential oil. You also could probably put some chapstick in here, some chocolates. I'm going to show you how to make this box next week. So make sure you join me here Thursday night, 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. I will show you how I made that. Thank you guys for watching tonight. I hope you love the projects. I hope you had fun. Please, please, please share, comment, and like for a chance to win prizes next time. I think I'm going to be giving away some stamp sets. So uh, I will see you right here next week. I hope you have a great rest of your night. See you later.